In this video, we are going to discuss Arches National Park, and we're going to walk through a little bit on logistics on driving there, especially if you're dealing with an RV. Then we're gonna go through some of the sites and hikes and favorite things to see. And then lastly, we'll talk about some different camping options that you have at this park. We are here the third week of May in 2021, although some of the pictures and video are from October of 2018 also. We've been here a few times now. on some driving logistics. So this is a Utah state map. Of course, Arches is in Utah. Actually, all five of the Mighty Five, which are the five national parks in Utah, are all located south of I-70 and east of I-15. So in this general area. So a lot of people will tack them together and put a lot of stuff together for a national parks trip. Um, I would personally say that if you're doing Arches, take the time to do some of Canyonlands as well. You can easily do this in a one week trip. Um, if you add on and make it 10 days, you probably could even tackle on Capitol Reef National Park. I think you need a solid two weeks though if you wanna add on Bryce and Zion because um, th this is a lot of distance to travel, plus you wanna have some time actually enjoying the parks. So if you're just coming to Arches, you could do this on a day trip as you're passing through. Most people do only come to Arches and spend one to two hours here. But I think you'll find that there's a lot to do in this area and Moab and Canyonlands and you can easily make a whole one week trip out of this. Just so you know, from I-70 taking the 191, you're not going to run into any issues with tunnels or bridges or anything else with your RV. The same also goes if you were coming from Grand Canyon and you were working your way north on 191, we've done this as well and stopped at Arches, you won't run into any problems here as well. Okay, let's get onto the video of Arches National Park. When you first enter Arches National Park, you're going to wanna to make sure to stop at the visitor center. This is a great chance to talk to the rangers, get your park map, junior ranger packets, find out where you wanna hike for the day, um, if you need to sign up for any tours, if you still can. Those are usually done online at recreation.gov ahead of time, um, but maybe you can get into a last minute tour. You can also use the bathroom here and then fill up your water bottles because you're going to wanna make sure you have plenty of water with you on uh, during your hike and during your stay here. Most people that come to Arches are only spending about an hour or two here in the park. A lot of people are just kind of making it a stop as they're passing through. So if you have more than a few hours, you can journey all the way in to the end of the 18 mile road that takes you into Arches. But if not, if you just have a couple of hours, you may just see some of this early stuff I'm showing you here on the video, like some of these cool rock formations. Here you can see the three gossips. Uh, you can kind of tell why they probably call it that. Here you can see the rock formation that they call the organ. And what's really cool is that this used to be a sandstone layer of an ancient sea that used to be in this area. And over time it's eroded and that water and the ice and the wind have caused these holes in the formations leading to all the different arches. Arches National Park has over 2,000 arches here located in it, and you've probably seen it on the back of the Utah license plate. I'll show you some of the highlighted things that you'll probably want to see while you're here. The first is balanced rock. So this is 128 feet high, 3,600 ton Entrada sandstone boulder that's perched atop eroding mudstone. And since it is eroding, it eventually will fall someday. They've actually had another huge rock like this called chip off the old block, which was a smaller boulder and that actually collapsed in the seventies. So be sure to check that out while you're in this area check out Balance Rock. It's just right off of the main road, so you can't miss it when you're in this area. You can see here we are parked at the parking lot here and heading out on the hike to go check it out. The nice thing is, is there's quite a bit for little parking lots kind of around the way as you're trying to go to some of these major areas, not really RV accessible. So if you have a smaller RV, like a, you know, a, a van or something, um, that might be fine. But for our large motorhome, it's better to just have that parked at the campsite and then drive a different vehicle in. Um, those little camper vans or something, that's fine. But for large motorhomes, it's going to be very difficult to have parking along the way. 
The next place that we checked out, the next place as you're heading up the main road that takes you further into Arches and then you take that main road to get back out, is the windows section. And the windows section is nice because it's a loop hike. So you can start it and kind of loop around and you see a bunch of different arches that are in close distance during that time. So it's a nice hike. It's a pretty popular hike and, uh, hike and it's only about a mile long. This little rock formation you're seeing right there with that climber on it is actually called Garden of Eden. So it's, it's a little bypass as you're on your way over to where the windows section is at. So here we are heading to the actual window section and you can see these really large openings or windows. There's the north window, south window, and then you can see double arch out in the di distance and then turret arch. I like this little area because there's a lot of parking over in this area. There's bathrooms right over here. Um, which is nice. And then, like I said, you have that nice short loop. And so there's a bunch of different arches and things that you can see in this pretty short area. This is the windows area, which is one of the most popular areas in the park. This, Devil's Garden, and then Delicate Arch area. a one mile gravel loop that'll go around and take you to see a bunch of the different arches. So that's nice and easy. As you can tell, it's a windy day when we're here, which actually is kind of nice because it's a pretty hot day too. I think it's in the upper 80s right now. It typically in the summer months, when you're talking June, July, August, you're well above 90 and easily can go above 100 degrees. Now that's a dry heat, but it's still pretty darn hot. So be sure that you're staying loaded up on plenty of water. I think the highest visitations are during the summer too when kids are out of school but i would honestly say that i think may is a really nice time because it's usually warm without being too terribly hot and october is a nice time too because it's cooled down but you might just be catching it before the snow is really starting to fall you can certainly come here in the winter of course is open year round and even the campground is available year round and it's nice because you don't have to have reservations ahead of time for the campground during the winter months um, but it you know you are talking about snow and stuff like that so just expect that Another couple miles up the road now, we're to Panorama Point, which is a spot where you can pull over. There's some picnic tables and stuff, and you can see quite a distance. So it's just a cool stopping point if you need a little break. And then we're going to head up to Delicate Arch area next. So we're now at the parking lot for the Delicate Arch viewpoints. This is the point where you can just do a quick hike. One of them I think is only a quarter of a mile and then the other one's maybe a half mile and you can see Delicate Arch up the hill in the distance. And so it's a cool place that gives you a nice short hike and you can just see Delicate Arch in the distance. Um, this shows you a little bit more about the detail on those two different hikes. And I'll show you a zoomed in photo of Delicate Arch here in just a second. It's the one that you've seen on the Utah license plate. So you've probably seen pictures of it and it's really cool to see it from a distance here. If you don't have any mobility issues and you don't mind a moderate hike, you can actually hike out to Delicate Arch. It, it is a three mile round trip hike and it's pretty moderate. And if you do it in the evening, a lot of people like to do it during sunset. You need to be sure you bring flashlights and stuff so you can hike back out. If you're heading out from the Delicate Viewpoint parking lot, we're going to head up here where the Wolf Ranch parking lot is at. And that's the parking lot that you need to take if you want to hike out to Delicate Arch. So you can see here that it's a much smaller parking lot. It doesn't hold a lot of cars. So people that want to hike out to Delicate Arch, you either need to come here first and park there so that you're able to make the hike out to Delicate Arch or do that later in the day. Um, but you, it might be hard to find parking, just so you know. Traveling a little further on that main road for arches, this is the fiery furnace area. Really a beautiful area, but it's very easy to get lost here. So it's not really the kind of place that you wanna go hiking around on your own. You can book a three hour ranger led hike for this and you do that on recreation.gov ahead of time. And you can book that hike and then you're with a ranger and you don't have to worry about getting lost here. 
And then when you get to the end of the road, the four arches, you get to Devil's Garden. And this is a really cool area. This is actually where the campground's at as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about camping options. Devil's Garden has the least amount of visitors because um, a lot of people just don't make it this far into the park. They don't, well, they only have an hour or two, but if you have time, you can park in here and you'll see so many arches along this way. It's 7.2 miles round trip to do it, but you pass by eight different arches. And one of those include Landscape Arch, which is 306 feet wide. It's the longest span of any arch in North America. There's also the Double O Arch, which are two different arches that are mounted on top of each other. So really cool spot to see if you have time to get all the way out to Devil's Garden. Here's a little bit of that, that view of what the Devil's Garden campground looks like. This is a campground that you can book ahead of time um, on recreation.gov and you actually need to make sure to do that during the peak season which is March to October. They don't necessarily have a lot of large spaces for large RVs but there are some. It is totally boondocking so there are no hookups of any sort no water electric or sewer so you have to be able to just dry camp and um, but it's really nice because it gives you an option to stay in the park and then you can have the ranger discussions and things like that in super close proximity so those are all really nice features if you want to see more about just the devil's garden campground we actually have a whole video that just covers that If you prefer to have hookups or a bit more of a glamping option, then you can stay here at the KOA in town. We stayed here for quite a few nights while we were here in the Moab area. And you can see our spot here a little close together. They have some other spots that have a little bit more distance, but it's nice that you do have access to um, water, septic, and electric because you're running that air conditioning a lot while you're here in Moab. There's also a number of first come first serve campsites that are on the Bureau of Land Management or BLM land. This was one of our favorite spots. This was at Horse Thief Campground and really beautiful, great spots. Of course, they are first come first serve and they did fill up while we were there. And since you stuck to the end of the video, I'm gonna share a really cool super secret with you. From the entrance, it's not uncommon that at this entrance, it fills up with so many people that you are not able to go in. So what happens is this road that you're seeing in the distance gets so full with cars that it's coming back onto the main road and the city can't have that happen so they close down access into the park. It's not that the park is closed, it's just that you cannot line your cars up to, to get into the main entrance and that usually can be closed for a good two or three hours. But there is a back way to get into Arches, assuming you have a four wheel drive vehicle. So you can see us here in the Jeep, we're taking this road, it's called Willow Springs Road. And we actually have a whole video that just shows you Willow Springs Road. And it's nice to watch the whole video so you can decide whether or not you feel like your vehicle can take it. It's pretty cool because you pass by some dinosaur tracks, you pass by some other cool features. It is just a dirt road, but it, it's not really anything real elaborate or difficult. I think most all wheel drive or four wheel drive stock vehicles would be just fine taking this road. There is one point where the road um, has a bypass and you can take a little detour and go over to Whale, Eye of the Whale Arch. And we do that right here at this point. They're making sure that you know that you need to have high clearance at this point. And this would be a little bit difficult with just a stock four wheel drive vehicle. We have a lift on our Jeep and so it, it made it passable, but it might be hard in a stock vehicle. But what's really cool is if you can come out here, you get this whole arch to yourself. So we were just running around and playing and just loving having this whole space to ourselves before we then took the road all the way through through and it meets up in Arches National Park at the point where Balanced Rock is at. So I think that concludes all the info I have to give you about Arches. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. You can also ask any questions and I'm happy to answer those. You can find us at RV Homeschool on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe for more National Park and RVing information. Thanks so much. See you in the parks.